If you're hungry for restaurant data, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how you can scrape real-world restaurant data from Grubhub using an unofficial API so you can get access to raw structured data like this and do whatever you want with it. In an ideal world, Grubhub would offer an official API we could use to consume their data from them. But, like a vegetarian in a steakhouse, we can't always get what we want. A quick Google search for Grubhub API will show us there's not really an official one available. There are a couple things like this API package from NPM we could check out. We could use this JavaScript client to access Grubhub, but it kind of adds another layer of indirection into what we want to do. I prefer understanding the exact requests and responses needed to talk to Grubhub to see their scraped data. So now that we know there's really no good API or client we can use, let's take our browser from GitHub to Grubhub. So open up their site, and we want to take a look at the network traffic that their website sends and receives to their servers, so we can see where the structured restaurant data is coming from that Grubhub uses to populate its site. So the first thing you want to do is open up your network inspector in Google Chrome, right-click somewhere on the page, hit inspect, and you should find the network tab over here. Click on that, and now we can watch network traffic happen behind the scenes as we use their website normally. So let's look for food around us. I'm just going to do Hell's Kitchen. And now you can see all the network activity happening. Now Grubhub is showing me delicious restaurants in my area. You just scroll down, you can see all the restaurants here with their data, like the number of ratings, reviews, uh, the name, sort of where they are. So I want to get the raw data behind them. And I have a feeling that Grubhub is using Ajax to populate these, just based on how the site looks and feels. So I'm going to try clicking this next button and monitor the network traffic to see if I notice any JSON coming back to me with the restaurant data. So first what you want to do is make sure you have the XHR subtab selected in Chrome, and then clear network traffic so you can sort the blank slate. And let's click on the next page and see what Grubhub sends to our browser. So I clicked on this, and I immediately see a bunch of these search underscore listing endpoints being called. Let's take a look here, and I can see a request URL, and let's take a look at the preview. So I see what looks to be like search results. So let's take a closer look here. And if I click on results, I see what looks like a bunch of restaurants. Let's check out the first one. And I see some prices, some other things. Do I have a name? Lucky's Famous Burgers, 52nd Street. And if I scroll down, look what's the first result. Lucky's Famous Burgers, 52nd Street. So it seems pretty clear that the Grubhub website is accessing this URL inside of Grubhub to get back our data. So if I were to run this URL outside of Grubhub, I could get back this exact same structured data. However, because we're just kind of intercepting the traffic as a result of our legitimate use of Grubhub, this URL really isn't an official endpoint or API. And if we access it outside of a Grubhub client, it may or may not break the Grubhub terms of service. So I can't actually show you how to programmatically call this URL and parse the results into an easy to use format like a CSV file. However, I did create a page that summarizes some of these interesting URLs that you can find. I have a link to this below and you can access what some of these endpoints look like. Let's take search for example. And here's the same URL that we accessed the restaurant data from in Grubhub but on the Steve C data platform. So you can see the URL builder here. You're free to check this out if you want. It'll allow me to put in custom latitude and longitudes. It'll automatically construct the URL it'll need to hit. As well as if I were to click this green button, it would run this request over a proxy and then take all that messy JSON and denormalize it into a flat CSV file that I could quickly load up into a database or load into pandas and do some analysis on it. But like I mentioned before, because this is a totally unofficial endpoint, there's this really stern disclaimer here, which means if I were to click this green button, which would go and automatically paginate through everything and stitch it together into a CSV file for me, I may or may not be breaking their terms of service, which is really, really serious stuff. It's sort of like, you know, breaking the speed limit. That's something no one ever does. So I'm definitely not going to hit this green button. So then how are we supposed to get clean structured data in CSV format like this from Grubhub? Well, I've invented a foolproof solution that you can use without breaking the Grubhub terms of service. Just go back to their site and go back to that network traffic we intercepted and check out the search results. So here I am in results index zero and go through each of the fields that you're interested in. Like here I want the name and just select and copy it and then open up Microsoft Excel 
you can just paste it here in a column. So here I have name, and you'll see I pasted it down here. And then you can do it for any other field you're interested in, like here's the logo. You can just go and find the logo. It's one of these fields here, like this. And you just paste this value. And it kind of takes some work in here. And you'll see I just kept doing this over and over and over and over and over and over again until I got to about 10,000 restaurants around me, then I got tired. I definitely did not use that green button. I sat here and copied and pasted everything, thus abiding by the terms of service. So once you get your CSV file with restaurant data, regardless of how you got it, I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with that data, like make a map of the restaurants around you. So here's Pandas in a Jupyter Notebook. I'll have a link to the source code below so you can follow along with a similar CSV if you want to do this. So quickly you can just load the data into Pandas. Uh, data frame is basically like a fancy version of an Excel spreadsheet. So here I just want to eliminate duplicates. When I went through all the results, I noticed there were a few duplicates. So you can use this column called Restaurant ID, which is Grubhub's internal ID of the restaurant, and just drop any rows where I get multiple instances of that ID. So I only get one restaurant per uh, data set. And then from here, I want to take a look at the number of reviews that were positive. So each restaurant, there's a percentage of how many reviews are positive, like 99% were positive, 1% was negative, etc. I want to take a look at that and I want to map how, where are the good restaurants around me and also how many reviews are they getting to estimate as a proxy how much business do they generate. So this column here corresponds to the percentage that are positive. In this column here, rating count corresponds to the number of ratings. I'm just here doing drop NA in, uh, in Pandas, which eliminates any rows that contain null or any values from these, so we don't uh, mess up our data. These would be like from brand new restaurants or closed down restaurants, just kind of messy data we don't want to look at. And I can preview the data frame here. I can see basic things about the restaurant, like here's the name, here's where that logo is. I can see other things, like they give me latitude, longitude if I expand this data frame, and we can see a lot of other things. Uh, so the best thing to do is just try this out for yourself and see what kind of data you can get back. Next thing I want to do is create a geodata frame from the original data frame and tell it where the latitude and longitudes are so I can plot these on a map. So in the Grubhub response, it gives me a latitude and longitude of each restaurant and I just feed them into here, longitude first and then latitude for a geodata frame to work properly. And I can see here I get a new data frame, but now it has a geometry column here with a point for each restaurant. So here's each restaurant is a row. And then this here is where it is on a map. Then here I'm just going to load um, a detailed map. And then here this code is going to plot all the restaurants on a map. And what it's doing is for the hue, which tells me the color, meaning I want green to be a highly positive restaurant and red to be a negative restaurant, I'm using that percentage of positive reviews. So here I can see the really green dots have really positive reviews. I can see in this legend here. Some of the highest ones are like 97% to 100% are positive. These are all green. And for the scale, you'll notice that each of the dots is a different size. I'm using the rating count to estimate how much business are these getting. And quickly see, there are some really good restaurants and some really bad restaurants around me. So unfortunately, this map isn't interactive, and we could do that as another exercise. But to just figure out which are the really good ones and bad ones, we can just take a look at the data frame. So here I just fetched them back and I sorted by the number of ratings because I can see here there are really only a handful of restaurants that have a lot of ratings. So I'd rather just look at these and then we can see quickly which ones have positive reviews, which ones have negative reviews. So here my data is showing me the most reviewed restaurant around me is Sakura Tokyo, which has amazingly positive reviews, 94%. So let's just confirm that our data matches Grubhub and search for the restaurant followed by Grubhub. Here we go, this looks like Brooklyn. And lo and behold, very high rating, 15,000 reviews. That corresponds exactly with what we have on our data. Now let's figure out the restaurants to avoid. So here I'm just gonna go on my review percentage and oh, this one's 77%. East Village Farm and Grocery, do not shop there. Let's just cross-reference our data and search here. 3.6 stars, okay. So it seems like our data is pretty accurate and we can quickly learn a lot from our map. Isn't that cool, right? There's a lot you can do with restaurant data. Let me know in the comments below what you want to do with restaurant data, what other sources of restaurant data you want to collect from. Do you want to look at maybe menu data, more pricing data, 
harvest more data in the reviews. We can actually get free text and individual reviews for each restaurant on dishes. Let me know your creative ideas in the comments so I know what videos to make next. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and don't forget to subscribe so you see my future restaurant data videos when they come out. Thank you and have a very delicious and data-driven day.